Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Red Pill Tamales. You're either going to choose the blue pill or the red pill. Do you want to be woke? You've come to the right place. Uh, it's your boy Chingo Blingo with the big tamarindo, a.k.a. the Versace Mariachi. is in stores now. And we got the homie, Rob. What's up, everybody? Rob, the producer. Rob, I was in San Antonio. Shout out to everybody that came to the album release party. It was a VIP experience. Man, it was so many Latinos for Trump folks. <laughs> And, and I was a little bit taken aback because I haven't done a rap show in a long time. And it blew my mind to see all these people that were like, yeah, <laughs> they, man, they gave me T-shirts, stickers, all kind of stuff, little Trump flags. And I'm like, hey, man, I, I'm just pro-America and I, I think he's doing a good job. I think he deserves another four years. I think the media has been lying on him. And but shit, thank you. I wore the shirt though. I wore it. Did you? I wore it into a uh, Black Rifle Coffee. Nice. You know, I was in there like, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't obviously wasn't on the road for this for this opportunity to see all these new fans. But when I got the text from Chingo, I was, I, I literally laughed out loud at the awesomeness and the what seemed like in my head the absurdity of it. But no, it's reality. Like that's for real, for real. Fans. Yeah, this podcast. You know what we're trying to the type of game we trying to spit. We trying to be big homies. That's right. All we really trying to do is show you how to show you how to peep game you know don't always take what the media tells you as face value and we're going to talk about some very interesting things um people been asking about red pill tamales merch people been asking about what's up with a season two are y'all going to keep it going we are going to keep it going because this show is listener funded hit us up patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales and sign on up because it's listener funded it's going to keep our speech as free as it can be as it is, YouTube has already sent an email to everybody saying, hey, uh, tell them the dates, Rob, where they're going to start giving us strikes. And Yeah, so right now they're saying basically that if you allude to like electoral uh, fraudulent kind of things or the election was rigged, they're going to start just taking down your content, which I think you actually sent me videos of somebody. Wasn't it Scott Adams that had something removed? Yeah, they already started flagging his stuff, mm -hmm. right? And then I think after the Electoral College votes are casted, which is January 6th, they're going to start removing channels altogether or giving you strikes, and all, and then after that, removing the channels. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. But uh, hit us up, patreon.com forward slash Um Because this is episode 11, right? After We're going to record 12 as well this week. And then after that, we haven't fully decided that, the, that we're going to have still an episode for everybody to discover. You might get half of an episode, but then the patrons will get everything else that's recorded on this series. Yes, yeah, so all the patrons get the bonus feed. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an RSS feed, and, and you'll get it through the Patreon. Yep. And, and also, if you're a, if you're a patron, uh, send us your address. Yeah, send uh, a message uh, for right now because those that sign up don't have to give us the, the address, but we're whipping up something special for patrons. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't sign up and give your address, just send the message in. And then going forward, if you sign up, you'll probably see, hey, do you want to give us your address? And that's because we're whipping up some special tamales for you guys. Yeah, because, oh, whoa, <laughs> extra masa. Because uh, Rob is managing the project. He's staying on top of it. He's making sure that uh, the patrons are tended to. And um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Y'all are our bosses. Y'all want y'all demanded more red pill tamales, so we in the kitchen whipping it up. That's right. And today I have kind of like a table of contents because so much was going on. Chingo's out of town, and I want to get back to the San Antonio trip before we get into what's going on today. But today's the 14th, so as a lot of people know, maybe those that don't, the electorals, the electoral college meets today and casts their votes for who the next president's going to be, right? And then we got that. We have the cybersecurity leak today that people are saying uh, China. Not China, Russia, rather, did it. Uh -oh. And then we also have a China leak that we're going to talk about. We have uh, the United family. They got kicked off the flight because the baby wouldn't put the mask on. Bill Gates calling for shutdowns. We're talking about all kinds of interesting... Uh, Biden and the civil rights leaders that he spoke to. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of shit going on uh, this weekend. Yeah, they were spying on Biden and uh, all the Democrat people. The same ones that weren't tripping when they spied on Trump. They were like, y'all can't be spying on Biden. Right. right dude but uh i want to hear about your trip real quick to san antonio and, and that way listeners know that you visited uh black rifle which we happen to be talking about the day you left yeah shout out black rifle coffee company wouldn't mind uh having a franchise here in houston holla at me uh i already looked into it we could talk about it off air rob nice i know rob got that big bread he, he finna fund the whole thing yeah that's I'm, it i'm be like rob i'm gonna just do the marketing behind the scenes <laughs> uh 10 for the big guy it's for the big guy. For the big guy. We're going to keep that phrase forever now. Uh, what if you found out that Santa Claus is the big guy? <laughs> oh, you mean the fucking commie that wears red? Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Oh, he's a commie? I don't know. <laughs> right? He's giving out gifts. <laughs> uh, okay, so San Antonio. 
we did the Versace Mariachi album release party. Uh, when we left, when Marisol, me, and uh, my boy Frank Compound Films, we left from Houston. We had to go straight to the video shoot. So I had a studio booked, and we we uh, scooped up the homies. Uh, that boy T drove in. Uh, Racheton from L.A., my homie Tres and his boy Swavy. Um, the homies, they flew in from Cali. So we was out there deep. DJ Rapper Rick, uh, Queen, of, Queen of Crunk was the host. She needs to do stand-up, by the way. Very funny. And we started shooting a music video for Boom Boom. Baby, boom, 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 boom. And, and it was just, man, back on the grind, back on the road. And it kind of kicked our ass because... You know, they giving out Ornitos Tequila at my event. Oh, you shit. know, they had a menu, pick whatever you want, play it. It's on Ornitos. So people started feeling Ornitos up in there. Uh, but it was cool to show these the, the Cali homies how Texas rolls. Mm-hmm. They got to, you know, eat at a few uh, food trucks. Shout out to uh, El Remedio in San Antonio. The birria was off the chain. And um, they got to see how we're able to move freely you on you could walk on the sidewalk you could be at a park you know what i mean you yeah. could be outside you can go to an event be around other people live your life yeah live a life and be a human and you know because over there racheton's mom has like i think salvadorian uh restaurant she had to shut down completely because she wasn't allowed to even do takeout mm. and it's like man y'all are really trying to crush small businesses and and it's like you know, I don't know. I don't know what kind of science or data y'all going by because I, they did the same thing in New York City. And I think if you look at the chart, out of the top five sources for COVID, uh, restaurants were number five. And it was like a 1%. It's like a 1%. I don't know how they come up with that, how mm-hmm. they're able to source where you caught it. Yeah. Or who got exposed or how. But you're going to change the landscape. You're going to change the face of all these cities. What about all these little venues and nightclubs and stuff? Like, it's going to become some Live Nation type shit. They're going to come in and be like, oh, I see you can't pay your rent here. Uh, you know, music hall or, yeah. or comedy club, whatever. And they're going to swallow that up. So they fucking over, you know, the, the backbone of America. The, yeah. The small businesses. Especially in California where a lot of that money comes from small businesses. Well, you know, we talked about the uh, sister city, Shanghai. Right. right? So I don't know, Fang Fang. <laughs> we're not saying nothing. We're just we're just alluding to news, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then, so the party was good. Every, yeah. Everybody got to hang out. And then, was it the next day or that day you saw the Black Rifle spot? The, the next morning, uh, before we bounced, I got up. We we're about to check out of the hotel. I said, "Babe, I'm gonna go get some coffee." I just typed in Starbucks, right? It's like McDonald's. They're everywhere. And I'm driving, and I, I'm seeing all the people outside of Starbucks with their masks because they're not allowed to dine in. Right? They're out there waiting in line for a little cafecito and shit. They're like in line. It looked real communist in that bit. They like, had the like they're in their food line? Yeah, said? like a bread line. They're just waiting. It was fucked up. And I'm like, man. And then I see this beacon of hope and light and freedom. Bright white building, Magnolia style. Shout out to Waco with the black trim. And it says Black Rifle Coffee Company. And you just see people coming in. You know, you see American flags everywhere. I park. I'm like, oh, yeah. I had my Latinos for Trump shirt on because, you know, it was a gift. <laughs> and uh, and my wife was packing luggage and stuff. So I walk up in there, and it's bumping. It's like people on their laptops. It looked like, you know, life a year ago. And I know the virus is real and all that. You know, we, we fear and respect it. Uh, but, you know, they were shit was open. And I'm looking at the merch and, and how they had everything displayed with the Christmas stuff and, like, the... The military theme and the text and the jackets and the the mug. They had a grenade mug. I'm like, damn, that's a badass fucking grenade. They were sold out, though. Damn. And uh, everyone's on their laptops building and creating. And the the dude was telling me they hired the Starbucks management and the, a bunch of workers because they had to lay them all off. So I asked them, okay, so y'all are like neighbors. Y'all are catty corner. Why are they not letting people go in and they're lined up like a bread line? They're laying people off, people losing their jobs. Meanwhile, y'all are growing, expanding, talking about more franchises, hiring their staff because they were out of work. I was like, how is that contrast possible? He's like, well, they, they're corporate. They choose to do what they do, and we're still adhering under all CDC and local mandates or mm-hmm. whatever. That was it's, a, it, it, it's really that simple, huh? It's like that corporation said, these are the guidelines that you have to follow. Similar, honestly, to... 
all grocery stores and anywhere that we go right now. Uh, I was at HEB yesterday. And shout out HEB. Love HEB. Don't get Love me wrong. H-E-B. But, you know, I saw a few people walking down aisles without masks on. All right. They don't have to wear a mask, even though HEB says it's, it's you know, the no, you know, no entry without mask or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's not a law and it's not mm-hmm. a, you could really run into uh, some legal battles if you really started pushing people, which we've seen videos of that happen at stores. Other patrons, you know, dumping shit on other people and getting real aggressive with them. But the store themselves, they really can't do anything to you if you don't wear the mask, right? So Starbucks says, hey, you can't come in. You know, they push that really hard and people abide by it. It's just like I'm sure if it was an Apple store, people wanted to get the new phone, they'd put that fucking mask on and get their their iPhone, which whatever. And Black Rifle was like, nah, you know, we're not going to take it that far. You don't have to do that. You just, you know, just abide by, you know, social distance maybe. And I'm sure we'll do whatever you can to stay clean and safe and Whatever you can come in, right? Wait, so you could you literally don't need a mask to be in Black Rifle. Uh, I don't know about Black Rifle, but I'm oh, saying okay. I'm just saying it's not a law. Mm, they gotcha. might say like, yeah, we would like you to wear one, yeah. but it's not against the law if you don't wear one. Uh, don't forget to put on your dirty ass mask. Yeah, <laughs> you got laying around your car and shit. You're like, fuck, I need a mask. Yeah, let's be real. Everybody that's listening to this probably is wearing. I wear the mask. I don't fuck. I want to cause yeah. any problems anywhere. But when's the last time you washed it? You know. Yeah, well, my, I mean, they wash them here, like, you know, <laughs> my wife and Luisa and stuff. Most people I know are like, yeah, you're right. I really don't wash it that often. But, but, yeah. Is it a, is it a hospital industrial grade washing machine? Exactly. Did I, I sanitize my hands before I touched the mask? You know? Yeah. Do I need to sanitize my face so the mask don't? <laughs> there you go. All those little things matter, right? Uh, no virus leak around in, through the pores of the mask. Yeah. I saw a video or it was a tweet of uh, like some, you know, government official used some kind of like thermal camera to see how much breath comes out of a person. Did you see that video? Uh, 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 and it so. just looked like it was somebody outside in the cold breathing, you know, where you see the, <laughs> the, the, the air. And I was like, OK, maybe. I mean, yeah, we're not saying that nothing comes out of your mouth, but are you going to catch Corona or anything because of it? I went live the other day from my sister's house. They were doing a um, Christmas lights tour, like people going through the neighborhood. We were all dressed up like the Grinch and Nutcrackers and all this sugar plum fairy people. And uh, we're like, Merry Christmas. And I went live. And like, some of the comments are like, where's your mask? I'm like, bitch, I'm outside. <laughs> I'm outside. It's cold. Virus don't. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. Tin foil hat. Virus don't <laughs> like cold. Dude, uh, there was a video of a guy on a trail. I think it was California probably where the lady wasn't wearing her mask. And the guy, it was the trail was pretty big. It was probably yeah. like an eight to ten foot gap in between. And you're outside. And you're outside. And stops a lady like, ma'am, where's your mask? She's like, I'm outside on a trail. I'm not wearing a mask. He said, I'm just asking where your mask is. She's like, I don't have a mask. I'm outside. Well, you're a little close. When you walk by, please look the other way. She goes, we're like 10 feet apart. What are you talking about? Not only that, there's a thing called viral load. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, this space that we're in, this is temporary, y'all. You know, we red pill the mile is blown up. We're going to get our own studio. Um <laughs> Where they but can like, see more than one wall. But like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'll be able to see Rob on season two. <laughs> it's a reveal. I can't put a camera on me right now. Oh yeah, they asked for you, man. Uh, there's one cat. He drove in from Dallas. I think he was from um, Pleasant Grove or something like that. Dope. Uh, and he was like, "Hey fool, uh, hey is producer Rob White." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, nah, he's Mexican as fuck. He's like. Oh, okay, that's what's up. That's what he sounds real. He sounds good, bro. He sounds proper. Where's he at, fool? Is he here? Is he here? And I'm like, nah, man, he didn't make it. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Damn, well, where's he at? I'm like, god damn. I'm like, what am I, a chopped liver? <laughs> that's so funny. Whoever you are, I'll meet you one day and <laughs> yeah. we will chop it up, have some hornitos. And, and then you'll show him you're not white. Yeah, I'll show you. Definitely not white. Yeah, not a coconut. Nope. Yeah. Puro, you know, Tigres del Norte. You're not a sellout. No, no. As my uh, friends who don't know Spanish, you know what they say? Huh. The Tigers of the North. Oh, no. They're Mexicans that don't know Spanish, but and they like that music. So they just call it Tigers, Tigers of the North. Of the North. <laughs> huh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. You know, music is universal. <laughs> Dude, it's fucking hilarious. Call it what you want. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, viral load. Yeah, viral load. You know, in other words, if you're out on a trail and you're briefly walking past someone there's not enough virus sitting there like you're outdoors i mean now if i had about 50 people in this room and we all smoking weed and it's just exhaling like a motherfucker and we just in here all day that's a lot of viral load if somebody happens to be sick but to the people that were like where's your mask it's like okay all right i have been tested somewhat recently i have no symptoms and sure there maybe there's a chance i'm asymptomatic or whatever it's like well what is the probability 
of all that you know it just yeah. keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller like what are the chances that i have it what are the chances i'm asymptomatic what are the chances i'm uh contagious what are the chances are there's enough viral load and so on i don't know obviously it's spreading but um uh, yeah <clears throat> and I, again we don't we don't want to be complete conspiracy theorists but every day we do see like the cases are rising the biggest death day in you know the pandemic's history or whatever and it's like ah, oh, damn like Really? Like, is it that serious, or is it still point oh 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 one two percent chance of dying from it? Imagine if if every day the news chose to focus on diabetes deaths or car wrecks. Let's just say they focus on car wrecks, and it's like the, the number keeps going up. Look at the number. Look at the rate. Look at the number. Look at the rate. Look at the number. Look at the number. You'll be like, hey, Rob, when you leave here, man, you sure you don't want to just, you know, maybe crash here, bro, because it's not safe out there in a car. You know what I mean? It'd be like, you know, we're doing car shutdowns. I know it's a bad analogy because car wrecks aren't contagious. Right. But, um, you know. But even the regular flu, and I don't think we've talked about this, but I personally didn't know how many people died from the flu every year. You know. Did you? you? No, I didn't. I didn't. I was not familiar. There was a point in time where I did not think the flu was deadly at all. I didn't either. Um, And I also heard, now obviously it is, right? But I've also heard that... uh, the way they come up with that flu death number. Y'all can fact check me on this, but supposedly they don't really tally it up. Like you would think it's like, all right, how many flu deaths do we have in Houston area, Harris County hospitals? Add it up. All right, now let's go county by county. All right, how many per in the state this year, flu deaths and so on times. Okay, th- these 50 states add it up. There's your number supposedly they don't even do that it's just kind of like this little equation like they lick the thumb and put it up to the wind you know what i'm saying it's like the weatherman like they're just about to hit a golf ball like where's the wind blowing sepa la madre i wasn't i wanted to look up the exact number but it's around uh let's see what do we got here well flu and plaques uh blah, 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 blah. cdc estimates that influenza has resulted in between nine and 45 million illnesses between 140,000 and and 810,000 since uh 2010 so it was somewhere around like it was over 100,000 people let's just say a year mm-hmm. die from just the regular flu i haven't heard jack shit about the flu in 2020 well the it, media man it's like we cured the flu though we cured the regular influenza flu yeah I mean, there's different strains or whatever. Every year, yeah, it's a different strain. But it just shows how the media, let's just say there's a hundred things in a day that could be considered news, right? Just a list of a hundred things. Like, there's all kinds of shit going on. Out of those hundred things, they got to look at what they feel we need to be worried about or what they feel we need to focus on or what they feel they can get more clicks and it's just more relevant or people care more about whatever it is they come up with their top 10 or however to put it out there and make stories and program to fill up their channel to sell ads to make money so that just goes to show man that like they choose what we focus on and what we worry about like yes this is random yesterday i was at uh, Lil flips uh podcast Mm -hmm. Uh, shout out to flipperachi hook me up with some you know what I'm saying? He got these kicks and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? What up? You know, he's hustling. Got a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, he, he even had this Monopoly board. It's called Trillopoly. Okay. And it has, like, Alabama Street, McGowan, like, San Felipe, Westheimer. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's like, cool. And then even the pieces, I was impressed. The pieces were, like, the like the H, like a little taco thing, uh, the Clover G's, his record label thing. So I'm like, damn, they went all out. Like, the board opens up just like Monopoly. Anyway, what the fuck I bring that shit for? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, this is what it was. Okay, cool. He had a magician there. <laughs> <clears throat> so okay. this little dude named Jose was doing magic tricks. On was he a Democrat? Did he make votes disappear? I, I know. I, I, hey, his name's Jose. I thought he made dope disappear. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of magician, drug dealing wizard? Uh, so anyway, he, he was doing this magic trick. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, if Flip asked me about this Trump shit, about this Chingle Bling voted for Trump scandal. Yeah. I was like, this is what I'm going to say. Earlier, we just saw, we all witnessed a magician pull a stunt. And we obviously know it was a trick. We obviously know it was magic because it's Jose. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Jose's doing it. And we're like, oh, shit, how he make three, you know, it was 10 cars. Now it's 13. What the fuck? Oh, my God. What kind of mechanism? Sleight of hand. 
And I was going to be like, the media does that on a grander scale. And they, but you know what I mean? I was going to go with the magician route to, to talk my way out of the fucking. I like it. <laughs> that's, that's a good approach. That's quick thinking on your feet. That's what a professional comedian does. I mean, that's just a, because it's really hard, man. It's really, really hard. Like, um, you know, you, sometimes you get into conversations with people that have no idea where you're coming from. Bingo. And, or honestly, of the landscape that they're even asking the question about. They might just ask it because they know it's relevant, but not because they necessarily know more about it. Well, well I, guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is um, think about how difficult it is. You sound crazy to people when all they do is watch CNN and they just believe one narrative and you're just kind of like, um, the news lies, video lies, context matters. Look at the uh, Covington kids, how they made them look a certain way. They end up suing CNN because that's not how it really went down. They... they mislabeled them and we just sound crazy to some people where it's like hey guys y'all know he didn't really say that or like how the fuck could chingo bling mr they can't deport us all you supposed to be mexican sell out how could you side with a racist and then i'm over here like i'd argue that the other guy's more racist and they're like no fucking way <laughs> They lose their shit because it's like what are you talking about biden's a good guy and it's like no i think he's full of shit yeah I think he is, guys. I think you should look it up. Is what we should tell. And we say it with like a, a calm demeanor, like ah, look into it, you know. As a good old Eddie Bravo would say, ah, look into it. You might find some things that are a little uh, different from what the media says. Yeah, it's simulation, bro. That actually kind of brings up the point uh, as soon as I can find it. Where and you hadn't seen it yet, but when Biden was talking to civil rights leaders here recently, what well, they tape recorded. Um, yeah, I can't wait to hear that. Yeah. But I'm, as I, I've only heard bits and pieces. As I find it real quick, take me back to, to Black Rifle. Like, what was your impression okay. after you left was, between the two? Because we didn't finish on the story. Oh, Across okay. the street, like, they're fucking begging for their coffee or waiting for it in line. Yeah. It, I was just very impressed with the branding of it, the experience. What I mean by branding is kind of like you get a sense of what they stand for. And it, they still looked, they were unapologetically patriotic like it wasn't in your face like you're just walking into red white and blue which i know that hurts people's eyes unfortunately right some people are like it's a lot of patriotism bro that's racist <laughs> i don't know how the fuck they tricked y'all into thinking flags are racist y'all stupid as fuck god excuse my language but you dumb as a motherfucker if you let somebody reprogram you and hypnotize you into thinking that the the country where you live where you have freedoms and rights is somehow like you focus more on on Fourth of July talking about I'm gonna use this day to see how I could uh, reflect upon all the things. And it's like damn, that is some Marxist ass shit. They making you not love your country. So anyway, Black Rifle Co Coffee Company. I was just blown away as to how you know a veteran owned you know American company. One of their mission statements is to emancipate the American people from corporate coffee. Okay. So basically. Dunkin' Donuts is very corporate. Starbucks is very corporate. We're going to try to do things slightly different. Yeah. That, well, that's why I'm kind of surprised that it's funny you said, uh, you know, I left the hotel and I just t typed in Starbucks because it's, it's, you know, it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. Yeah. Whereas I, I thought Chingo Bling would type in coffee just to see what would pop up. Because you might get like a, what's, uh, what is Some this? local shit? Yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest, man, when you're in a hurry, and I could already tell that that side of town, it, it was just very... um suburban mm -hmm. new not to say you don't have little local coffee shops but that's a that's a great point man i wasn't even thinking that like summer moon you ever been to a summer moon in austin or mm -mm. i don't know if it's in san antonio but it's a cool coffee shop in austin mm. um uh, but yeah would they be mad at me if i walk in with like a, an american flag face mask no nah. you sure no nah. okay yeah Okay. Don't take my you word for it. I don't know. Don't no, take you, my word for it. I don't it. know, bro. You said Austin, <laughs> Summer Moon. You're sounds right. Sounds very. More companies are moving there. Oracle just announced they're moving from California to Austin. Do you think all that will backfire and they're going to start voting blue? That's what a lot of people say. And that's what, I mean, the cynical part of me wants to say that too, but I can't see them leaving that area and then coming here and voting that way. We shall see. We shall see, because you know. What do you What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know. Let us, because Texas every year it's 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 a smaller and smaller gap between going blue, which would be the first time since I don't know Kennedy, I think, that Texas was blue. Mm. But anything could happen. You know. I wonder what the state was like when it was run by the blue. 
And that, yeah, that's a, that's because our, our, our big cities are blue. Mm-hmm. It's all the rural that's cons- the red, right? Mm-hmm. Conservative. And by the nature of the nature of inner cities, we the ones got all the crime. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if Democrats are getting a bad rap. Like, hey, y'all running the city back. I want to look at an example. What is a what, who are some Republican run cities? Cities like big cities. cities. I mean, any kind. I mean, yeah, hopefully big. Yeah. So it could be more apples to apples. That's a good question. We should actually look into that and see how they run stuff versus the others. Because you have like, uh, like you know, Kentu- like maybe cities that have uh, Republican senators would be a good example too. But I'd have to look into it. That's a yeah, good question. Curious. Let me see if this plays real quick. This is the Biden. So basically the video says Biden not enthusiastic about executive orders. So I didn't hear much of it either, but they were calling for him to do basically some executive order type shit when he gets in office in his first 100 days or whatever. Some things that I'm going to be able to do by executive order. I'm not going to hesitate to do it. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to do what used to, Benita, you probably used to get angry with me during the debates. When you'd have some of the people you were supporting said, on day one, I'm going to executive order to do this. Not within the constitutional authority. I am not going to violate the Constitution. Can we pause real quick and see, and just notice his tone of voice with them too? How it's not very like, oh, Mr. Joe Biden, you know, I'm for everybody, you know, and he's very... He's get very, off my lawn. Yeah, he's very, get off my lawn. Uh, he seems very... You don't know how this works. He seems very bothered by them even asking this of him after they've already voted what, for what him. What are they asking? What are they requesting? Executive orders. Uh, I I don't know if this video is going to play because I haven't heard it, but they wanted basically like the reform of the police where the, he would uh, use executive orders to give like a database of officials that had other prior like encounters with uh, minorities or, or whatever, whatever. It, that's the gist of the, what I remember reading, but I haven't watched this video. This video is from The Intercept, by the way, and I think it's everything that was leaked, but there might be more. So let's keep going. Executive authority that my progressive friends talk about is way beyond the bounds. And as a, a, one of you said, maybe you, Reverend now, well, whether it's far left or far right, there is a constitution. It's our only hope, our only hope. And the way to deal with it is where I have executive authority, I will use it to undo every single damn thing this guy has done by executive authority. But I'm not going to ex- exercise executive authority where it's questioned, where I can come along and say, I can do away with assault weapons. There's no executive authority to do any of that. And no one's fought harder to get rid of assault weapons than me. Me. But you can't do it by executive order. If you do that, next guy comes along and says, well, guess what? By executive order, I'm going to say everybody can own machine guns again. That was the clip. He just seems so bothered at answering anybody's questions, and I, I wish this would have been the part where he he tells us, you know, them like no one's done more for the black community than I have, than me, and he he keeps repeating himself too, and I feel like some old mobster from an old movie or something. It's like me, this guy, who 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 put this thing together, me, me, that's who I did. Um, oh, here's another one. Let's play this bitch real quick. One of the things I'd be concerned about, just as was pointed out to me that. You wanted me to be concerned, Derek, I think it was you said it, about, you know, uh, um, uh, dealing with um, Vilsack as, uh, in, uh, in terms of a ter- of a Jesus, get it out. Well, first of all, you will learn more about Vilsack's record, but my point is this. I don't think we should make that a big issue going into before January 5th when the election takes place down in, in, uh, um, uh, in uh, Georgia. But he's, I also he's talking don't about think we should get too far ahead of ourselves on dealing with police reform in that because they've already labeled us as being defund the police. Anything we put forward in terms of the organizational structure to change policing, which I promise you will occur, promise you. Just think to yourself and give me advice whether we should do that before January 5th because that's how they beat the living hell out of us across the country saying that we're talking about defunding the police. We're not. We're talking about holding them accountable. We're talking about giving them money to do the right things. We're talk- That's not what they're talking about. That, that was never about giving them more money to do the right thing. He's, he's lying to them as they're having this fucking meeting after they've already voted for this guy, after he sounds annoyed as shit that he's even have to answer these questions. A- after he 
after the whole basis of his campaign was based upon a hoax, he, he kept saying, there's three reasons why I signed up to, to campaign to run. And one of which was Charlottesville. You know, mm-hmm. he called Nazis fine people. And it's like, bro, either either you believe that and you're a low information person or you lying because you know damn well y'all cut the piece out when he's like, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis. All the hate needs to be condemned. Yeah. And, let, you know. There's, let's hear another 40 seconds talking of about putting clip. more psychologists and psychiatrists on the telephones when the 911 calls through. What? We're talking about spending money to enable them to do their jobs better, not more with more force, with less force and more understanding. But that's, I just raise it with you to think about. How much do we push between now and January 5th? We need those two seats about police reform, but I guarantee you there will be a full-blown commission. I guarantee you it's a major, major, major element. So they're still talking about the, you know, the Georgia uh, Senate runoffs, which was, uh, there was also audio of, uh, what's his name, John Ossoff saying, somebody asked him, it was from, um, fuck, John, uh, James O'Keefe, uh, Project Veritas, about packing the courts and stuff like that, and he was like, oh, we can't say that here, we can't say that out loud in front of everybody, and they're like, oh, you know, I, I'd be for it, you know, the person undercover, and he's like, well, yeah, I mean, that's what you got to do, you got to play the political game and say, you know, whatever the narrative is out loud. Who, who says that? John Ossoff, the guy, one of the Democrats running in the Georgia Senate race. So one of the guys that's running for the uh, Democrats, Georgia Senate race, mm-hmm. said says that oh we can't say anything about packing the courts uh-huh. out loud at you know at this rally or whatever because it's it, it's not it's not the right place you know kind of thing. We gotta, we gotta it's, he goes it's politics like you gotta say whatever the narrative is you gotta run with that. That's what we that's what we run on. That's what we talk about. And it was just like slimy kind of shit. The, was, the shit that we trying to tell y'all. Yeah. And motherfuckers call us crazy, sellouts. Yeah. Chingo warned you. I would go and I would look up this video, find the whole Biden uh, talks to civil rights leaders, and, and just listen to the whole thing. Like, it's not even about whose side you're on. It's just about figuring out what's actually being said and what narrative have they painted so far about Joe Biden and the black community versus what he's actually saying. So you're telling me that the dude that's been in government for 47 years, including vice president of the United States, it basically promised a bunch of stuff and he really ain't gonna do it of course so people voted for a dude that's been in government for 47 years and they expected him to to really follow through what about this first hundred days i'm gonna make everybody wear masks right what's up with that shit what's up with that shit it's and you know uh a couple of people have commented jimmy Dore. i do like jimmy Dore. jimmy Dore is like He's like a independent thinker, you know. He calls himself, I think, more more like independent and not necessarily Democrat or Republican. He's neither, right? He's anti everything, but he calls out both sides. And he's he says all the time, you're supposed to ask these people for what you want before you vote for them. You can't just give them your vote and expect them to then deliver on it. Dumbass. And I feel I feel like we've been saying that as well, but it's like again, people don't nah, get they, that concept. They want to do it, Evil and Gory and them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to go back to the originals, <laughs> they do. They want to just give them their vote, and then later feel like they're going to come back and say, oh, what, what are we going to, you know, what are we getting again? Or when are we getting this? No, it's nah, just it's you're too br- late. You're brown. You know you know where you're supposed to vote. It's just fucked because, up. Because if you don't vote for this white man and you voting for the other white man, then you want to be white. Yeah. What? Yeah. That, listen to what you're saying. Chingo yeah. Bling wants to be white because he voted for the other white man. It, in, Boy, you stupid as a mother. And it's not to say that the all the info of the 94 crime bill and the whole segregation conversation. And then Kamala locking up everybody. Right. It, it would seem almost, maybe because we're more on this side, we're further on this side than the other, that it almost made no difference to the voters. Like, like they didn't care. They're just well, like, oh, okay, whatever. Well, you gotta, I mean, as we already spoke, spoke on it prior episodes, a lot of um, voters on the left, had no idea about Hunter, Hunter Biden's thing, which now is starting to come out more and more. Mm-hmm. And here's the crazy thing. Politico, the way they first reported on the Hunter Biden scandal, they this is what they said. Uh, one of our sources from the intelligence community, I don't know if they were like current CIA or somebody or ex-CIA, they told the political people, Hey, all this Hunter Biden laptop stuff, don't worry about it. It's just Russian disinformation. It's just some made-up Russian stuff. They probably made the laptop. They probably dropped it off. They they gave it to Rudy. It's all Russian fake shit. Don't worry about Hunter Biden. Now, Politico saying, 
basically that the intelligence person pretty much lied because now they now they investigating the shit out of Hunter. So basically, here's the here's the moral of that story, of how Politico is reporting it now versus in the beginning. I know YouTube ain't gonna like this. Tiptoe, folks from the intelligence community, pretty much did their own disinformation against us. Mm -hmm. Swallow that red pill. Think about that. And they're diving deeper than his taxes, from what I've kind of started to gather. I haven't delved deep into it, but it's more than just tax. It's his business dealings. But check this out. From what I've heard, when they're on to you, because you're doing some... Now, keep in mind, Hunter Biden was a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So if he's going to commit some kind of crimes out in the open... He's probably going to be kind of slick about it because he's a lawyer. Even though he's allegedly a crackhead, right. he's still a lawyer, right? So when, they, when they're when they on to you and they're looking at a bunch of shady stuff, the way they investigate you is through your taxes because that's how you're able to see, okay, what all entities, are, what all assets, what do you, where'd that come from? Where's that going? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And taxes is the way they do it. So basically what... The moral of that story, that's the quote for the day. <laughs> the moral of that story is, yes, they're looking into his taxes, but really that's because it's some other shit going on, and that's how you go about it. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that it's all coming to fruition or coming to light after this shit's happened. Like today's Electoral College, you know, we're only weeks away from the casting of those votes. Those ya votaron, yeah. and now they're like, oh, wait. And here's the trippy part. Here's the trippy part. How long has let's just say attorney general um bar yeah bar how long has uh the the intelligence agencies known well apparently they had this for months they had the laptop already yeah the fbi had it for like six months and that's why the dude ended up giving it to rudy right rudy and them because he's like well i done gave it to these people and they ain't doing shit with it Mm -hmm. so think about that they've been campaigning they've been throwing all the fake news on trump they've been just you know, the news been getting paid just talking about all the weird shit he'll tweet or whatever. <laughs> and all the while, this other candidate is in this huge fucking scandal. And we the crazy ones. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who would have ever thought Chingo Blingo was the one? Who told you? Who, who warned you? Who would have thought I was Morpheus? <laughs> hey, look, one of y'all listening is Neo. I'm just saying, we in a video game. That's the shit I really want to talk about. That's true. But I'm still over here trying to fucking spoon feed motherfuckers at the news line to y'all. I really want to talk about how we living inside of a fucking real deal advanced computer video game. <laughs> and I'm Morpheus. Dude, shout out Ed again. Ed's a great patron, a big fan of you and the show. Uh, he's He made the graphic for the Patreon that we, they're using right now, the Red Belt the Demolis, foil? the okay. foil. Awesome. He's working on some other illustrations because he's a huge fan and wants to contribute. What's and up, Ed? He, he's, he brought that up uh, recently about the simulation and how what, what you're interested in it. And I was like, I'm, I'm he's got to be interested in it, like as far as I know. Who, Ed or me? You. Oh, absolutely. Every episode. You kind of drop, you like drop these little uh, because, salsa nuggets. Well, because we're still, uh, we're on the, we're in first grade right now. This is pre-K. Right. This is, I'm, trust me, dog. I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a 12th grader in terms of the simulation and all that. But in terms of how some folks still need to get kind of spoon fed. Mm-hmm. Like, like, for example, I can't wait for us to talk about the Sky News, the Australian news that uh, leaks. I mean, um put out a story about some stuff and and the news that other countries cover because it's a different game you know they can probably talk about some shit that they're not all these other countries they're not necessarily american domestic mainstream media Mm -hmm. so they're gonna they're talking about other shit that americans don't even know like, or, and, or can't even get because it's being censored by the platforms. Like they hide in uh, Breitbart. You can't even Google. You can't even pull up some shit. Um, depending on where you're from, what you ask in the Google, it'll finish the sentence differently. Uh, I mean, the algorithm is going to choose what you see. You know, big tech is steering the conversation with their algorithm and hiding shit. And you can't retweet that. And that's why listener funded is so important because... Yeah. If you support, if you like something, you know, support it to keep it going. 
Yeah, because big tech, you know, it, it, again, we use all these services, and I feel like we're picking on them, but we have to. Like, they really are up to these things, and then people need to know about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and Trump was, speaking of his tweets, he was talking about, you know, because people do talk about the audits that have happened and the recounts or whatever, right? But in some of these places, like Georgia, they didn't do a signature verification, which basically, you're recounting the exact same shit that you counted initially without the verification of signatures. Yeah, What's the point? Recounts don't mean shit. If it's already crooked from the jump, yeah. And so it's like, it's like if we, uh, if I cheated in Monopoly, <laughs> and I didn't already cheat it, and I'm like, okay, well, count my money again. They're like, bro, you stole the you money. You already stole it from the bank. You already stole the money from the bank when we went to the restaurant. We weren't looking, <laughs> and I was like, well, recount it then. It's like we're recounting the fucked up part again. We're gonna get the same bullshit result. And he's calling out, you know, especially in Georgia, he's tweeting like, "What a fool Governor Brian Kemp of Georgia is." And he goes on to say, "Democrats weaken the signature verification and other safeguards." Stacey Abrams played Brian Kemp and Secretary of State for fools. Consent decree, which is a terrible uh, consent decree, which is terrible for Republicans and honest people. Think about this, y'all. Do you think they're gonna try to cheat in the Georgia election if? We're not allowed to look at the code of the software. We don't have access to the fucking software. It's proprietary or whatever. Um, There's no penalty. Has anyone gotten in trouble for all these alleged, maybe they did, maybe they didn't, you know, the van pulled up with the tickets or they kicked us out of here. We weren't allowed to witness over there. They were covering the windows. Yeah, what happened in Michigan? What happened in Pennsylvania? Like, what safeguards are put in place? The witnessing? That's not happening. You're not letting people from the Republican side witness. You, you, you bullying them out of the room, locking people out of rooms and shit. So that's not a safeguard to make sure it's going to be uh, free and fair. Uh, you're not allowed to look at the software. I mean, God damn. Yeah. Just, just be out and open with it. Just say, hey, man, just fucking go home. We're going to cheat. You can't look at the software. You can't watch us counting the votes. There's no cameras in the fucking room. But we the coconuts, Rob. We're the crazy ones. We're the crazy ones. Out of our fucking minds. And and, and didn't Trump fire the head of the who? The and, national and security. So so the guy, yeah, that actually kind of goes in one of the next stories. Uh, his name was Chris, Cra- what was it? Chris, Chris? Crabb. Yeah, Chris that's Crabb. How, that's how you know we living in a simulation. When when the motherfucker in charge of, of our anti, what is it? Uh, cybersecurity. The dude that's involved, the dude that's in charge of domestic cybersecurity to make sure that Whatever software all these major agencies from the country uh-huh. are running, don't get hacked. His name is Krabs. <laughs> so he's Secretary Agent Director Chris. It's Krabs, but we're going to go with Krabs because well, I, I think that's better. Krabs in the bucket. Has reportedly said that the presidential election was secure from tampering or rigging. That's what he said originally about a month ago, if you guys remember. And Trump fired him shortly after for those remarks. So the guy that was in charge of... Uh, what is it called? What security? Cyber security. Cyber, cyber security for the country said, this is the fairest election we've ever had ever in the history of elections. And then we find out motherfuckers got hacked. Yeah, today the story is breaking that uh, the Treasury Department and a bunch of other high officiating departments are, were hacked and potentially for months. So this, this had been going on for at least, you know, they say six months. So... What's even more evil about this, in my perspective, is that this guy, seeing what's going on in the world, you know, how the elections went, or how the election went, and how everyone's so divided, still decides to say, he's putting he's putting basically more gas on the fire, like, this is the most safest to, uh, election in, in modern history. Even though we heard Russia, 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 for four years. Yeah. Good thing he got fired. 100%. Because you're supposed to be the dude in charge of cybersecurity, they get hacked. Of course they knew they got, I mean, when you get hacked, I'm pretty sure they found out like, oh shit, we've been hacked. Yeah, there's no way the public knows and they just found out. The, the government had that to That means known. y'all knew first. So the shit got hacked, you're in charge of cybersecurity, and you're telling us this is the fairest, freest election? How is that possible? <laughs> How are you telling us it's the fair, I'm not, I'm not one of them people that's saying like, I know for a fact motherfuckers cheated because I'll get my fucking channel deleted if I say that. What I'm saying is if you're the guy in charge (laughs) of cybersecurity for the country and you get hacked and you know it and then you turn around and tell us, hey man, this shit was fair and free, brother. This is the fairest one it ever was. Damn, what kind of magic tricks y'all trying to pull over there? 
and they getting caught with the cookie with the hand in the cookie jar they getting caught red-handed but yet our voices are the ones being suppressed cool this could turn into one of the most impactful espionage campaigns on record it's cybersecurity expert Dimitri Alpervik. Mm, that was uh, by recorded reported by the AP that's pretty scary i mean that's pretty crazy for a lot of people that follow this and are going to be keeping up with it and going over christmas with their parents or with their families and being like hey did you hear the treasury department and our big institutions got broken into on monday did you hear that um i guess allegedly they're saying that sixty thousand underage people voted in the georgia sixty thousand underage people something like that maybe google that okay uh, or duckduckgo.com yeah right that here's the thing don't you think that if the news people you know remezcla whoever these so-called journalists, don't you think that when an allegation like that gets made, let's say 8 a.m., all right, so all my Neos out there, all the Red Pill Tamales fans out there, listen to this. Imagine if 8 a.m., they make this allegation, 60,000 underage people voted in the Georgia thing, uh, election. Don't you think that maybe by 5 p.m., somebody might have looked into it, made a phone call, investigated, asked around, what the fuck are the, what is the news media doing? Like, shouldn't somebody be on top of it and at least by the next day say, hey guys, we looked into it, but uh, so far no leads yet. Or, hey everyone in, in America, there's these allegations, but uh, we haven't found anything yet. Something. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking it up because I do remember, I know that one of the variables, I guess, in this Georgia Senate runoff is that between, you know, the, the, the election, and then now knowing that they need a runoff and then up to whatever that is, January 6th, was it? Or 8th? I can't remember that. 5th. Um, there's a bunch of people that are turning 18. So a bunch of, I don't know if, how much that calculates into it, but they're talking about tens of thousands of people that will be turning 18 between the 1st and the 5th. They could impact this race because they're being guided in a direction, you know? Oh, yeah. It's not like they're keeping up with this well, shit. Well, yeah. No, the youngsters, the youngsters are probably getting the info from TikTok, CNN, and just pop culture. I, I, I'd argue that the youngsters are more likely to listen to LeBron James and oh, act, of course. actresses, yeah, and like comedians you, yep. and shit. Dude, uh, if you go to the... <laughs> 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 as, uh, as the comedians giving them red pills. I'm Morpheus, baby. Um, you know, you got to be able... We, we've talked about this in the past. Like being able to separate an entertainer's abilities and their gifts from their political views or anything, their standings on anything. But you can't help but go to... Uh, what's her face? Fucking uh, Demi, like Demi or anybody. Name Demi a, Lovato. Yeah, like what's the other chick? Fucking uh, I'm a huge fan of her. Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez, huge, huge fucking Instagram following. Uh, Ariana Grande, and seeing them talk to Kamala Harris with her fake ass, you know, uh, just the way she talks, it's like nails on a fucking chalkboard. But always talking about you know why they didn't vote before and why they're voting now and how important it is like it's it's a bummer for people that maybe don't agree with them and want to just cut them off write them off because of the way they vote but at the same time like how much research are they doing they're on set all day long everywhere all the time well think about how risky it will be for selena gomez to come out as a trump supporter what what's the likelihood of somebody at the level of like a taylor swift or or selena Go whoever mm -hmm. ariana grande mm -hmm. Demi Lovato, any of them people. And they openly voted for Biden, you know? They all openly said, we can't in good faith vote for Donald Trump. I wonder what reasons they have and how many of those reasons are hoaxes. Like, he says something bad about the military people, called them suckers. Well, that whole hoax, that entire story was based off of four anonymous sources, meaning people... That's that, the Gold Star family story, right? Yeah, people that, people that aren't willing to lie in public. People that won't put their name and face on They're not it. putting them out on an affidavit, that's for sure. They're, they're, they're anonymous sources, and everybody that was with Trump that day denied it. They're mm -hmm. like, I didn't hear none of that. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. You know, we canceled the thing because of the rain or whatever. He never said losers, suckers. But it's like, what reasons? He told us to drink bleach. Well, that was a hoax, too. He called Nazis fine people. That was a hoax, too. Yeah, and a lot of the younger, you know, Disney stars or whatever would say that it's a lot of, like, uh, social injustices, a lot of racial type stuff. And what does that have to do with Trump? Yeah. Rodney King went during Trump, mm -hmm. and that was a for real deal. That was straight up police brutality. I mean, I know, I don't know, I think he was on Sherm, PCP, I don't know what the fuck uh, Rodney King was on, and he might have resisted or whatever, but God damn, I mean, they was taking turns just beating the hell out of him. Yeah, man. 
So to get back to the Georgia Senate race, yeah, you could have potential of people underage voting somehow, uh, and then all the people that are going to be turning 18 could also play a big role mm-hmm. in flipping these seats. So I don't know. If you don't pay attention to it, it doesn't mean anything, but everybody that listens to this, I'm sure, is paying attention to it because it, it kind of disturbs the balance of power. If Dems still have the House, they gain the Senate, and they have the presidency, then it's kind of like, okay, we can, they can really pull off some crazy shit if they want Extremely to. Extremely crazy shit, like Second Amendment. Yeah. And we posted some stuff about um about the Georgia thing. We did it in Spanish, reminding people about the Second Amendment. And uh, I think that was like, what, episode or, or two ago? Mm-hmm. And we posted the clip. And, of course, I got all my little haters on Facebook. They were like, Cáete los cinco, wey. Yeah, take your L, da, da, da. And it's like, I'm talking about Georgia. Yeah. And it's like. Oh, yeah, yeah, Or yeah. they'll be like. Shut the fuck up. They're never going to take away our guns. Bah, 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 bah. I'm like, okay. Chingo warned y'all. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm like, look at the clip again, bro. Like, or, or look at the, the caption. It's like, this is the, uh, uh, you know, this is some shit that's at stake in terms of the numbers of the Senate and, mm-hmm. and the situation and all the variables. Yeah. People don't want to hear it though. And when the whole Texas lawsuit, you know, was not heard by the Supreme Court, that wasn't like they have, they keep having these days where the left is just going wild. You lost, you lost. How many times are you going to lose? You know, they threw out the Texas. It wasn't that they threw it out. They just didn't hear it. They didn't even hear it because, and that opens up another can of worms where, to my understanding, the simplest way to put it is that they said, we can't hear something that has a state suing another state for anything, whether the way they run their elections or whatever, because mm-hmm. then you'd have California suing Texas for environmental laws. Yeah. It's basically the parent telling the kids, stop fighting with your brother. Yeah. They don't want to get involved in the state's business and they don't want to overturn votes and results because then they might disenfranchise voters. And basically there's the law and technically they're supposed to interpret the law. But in some of these cases, they're kind of like, yeah, there's the law, but. We're just going, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, for the for the greater good, you and, know. And there's not a federal procedure for voting, which is bizarre, but because uh, every state handles it in their own way, and that's basically why they couldn't hear that case because each state, Michigan, Pennsylvania, whatever. And that's why some had Dominion software and some didn't. Exactly, yeah. Mm. So let me ask you this. Um, people that are upset and, like, mad at de Blasio, mad at Cuomo, mad at Newsom, uh, Garcetti, mad at the way the blue states are being run and super shutdowns, extreme lockdowns. What percentage would you argue of these citizens that are Democrat or are pro blue, whatever, how many of them you think are going to be like, "Mm, I wonder what California would be like if it was red, or I wonder what New York would be like if it was red. And we got Cuomo up out of here in de Blasio where they'll let you do a, a big old BLM gathering with a, on Fifth Avenue in front of Trump Plaza or Trump Tower, they're putting Black Lives Matter and shit as if he's the cause of George Floyd mm-hmm. somehow. Somehow he caused Breonna Taylor. Yeah. Um, you know, the, all these people out there, but then you can't have a restaurant. <laughs> you yeah. can't you can't even do takeout, nothing. It's just shut it down, maybe just groceries. That's it. How many of these folks are gonna be like, mmm? I'm kind of not digging the way they doing us. And that's what I encourage everybody listening. Like, pay attention to what state you live in and what what kind of laws and, and lockdowns and mandates and the vibe. Uh, is it business friendly? You know, are you free? Are you able to do stuff? Are you able to go to work? Can your kids go to school? Can you go to church? Because like, we're going to Boston uh, two days from now, and we're not going to be able to go to church on Christmas. Oh, really? It's shut down there? Everything. So, like, uh, our trainer, we just did a workout today. Leg day. Mm, yeah. yeah. Get that testosterone up. Yeah. <laughs> the comments are like, we love when Chingo goes full Hodge Twins. Yeah? Yeah. Man. <laughs> How funny is I'm, that? I'm afraid to read comments for my mental health. I try to avoid the comment section. That's a good move. Because I get fucking, I want to slap shit. I'll be like, drop a pin, motherfucker. I just hit legs, ho. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's going to run at him and spear him like a football player. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With that testosterone. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Bitch, get a concussion. Um, <laughs> fuck was I saying? Oh, leg day. Sean. He's oh. he's from New York. He's from Brooklyn. And we're like, hey, Sean, you're going to go home, visit your folks, and you know, you're know going to go out there and see the fam? He's like, mm, I wanted to. He's like, but as soon as I land, I'm going to have to do some crazy quarantine. And he's like, 
what the fuck is the point? I'm gonna miss fucking Christmas. Excuse my language. I'm gonna miss Christmas. And, you know, and then he said, um, well, you know, there's some folks in his family that may have, a, a, you know, like they beat some stuff and the immune might not be, immune system might not right. be all the way. So it's kind of like, nah, I might just fly some people in type of thing. It, ain't that crazy? Yeah. It's better for y'all to just come here. Yeah. Why isn't it, why, why why isn't the fam coming here from Boston? Or y'all just want to go well, out there? Uh, no, uh, Marisol's sister, um, you know, she's out there. She's homesick. And, uh, you know, and we wa- we haven't taken a little trip. We've been... Whew, We've been working nonstop. Um, one, one of the things that we want to do is declutter, get rid of all extra. I have too much clothes. Like people just give me stuff. I make stuff. Mm-hmm. So every time we drop new merch, it's like, oh, man, I can't wait to wear these hoodies. And it's like, okay, you still have hoodies from the last drop and the last drop. So every time you do a merch drop, you got shirts all in your drawer and sweatpants and all this type of stuff. Right. Um a lot of hats, just a bunch of stuff, you know, because we're always doing costumes. We're always doing photo shoots. It's always a production. It's always a music video. You have all your stage outfits. You got a, a bin full of boots. Mind you, I've given away the majority of my boots. Oh, like yeah. on stage, I would just throw them out. I'd take them <laughs> off. Here's the matching belt. Because really, I was getting burnt out. I yeah. was just like tired of like, you know, having so much boots. <laughs> have so many boots. <laughs> da, so you're Biden supporter, boot to the face. Sas puto. <laughs> I was trying to pull up the stat. The Wi-Fi is being a little wonky back here, but uh-oh, um, uh-oh. It, there was a, a listener funded. We need better Wi-Fi. Yeah, right. We need hardwired inter- internet back here in, in the studio to come. Real shit. But uh, there was a like a graphic that was like a, another historical kind of thing where Trump had won more counties in the United States and still lost the election. It was some kind of record. And I was like, damn, that's fucking crazy. Like you see all these counties that are, because you brought it up, right? Like what part they're blue or upset by what's going on. I'm like, I don't dig this. And it's just like literally the red wave of counties across the United States was huge compared to the blue counties. Well, um, the uh, I forget the guy's name. The head editor of Breitbart, he wrote a book. It's like an e-book. It's called Neither Free Nor Fair. And he wasn't, I haven't read it, but I heard an interview and I want to read it. He's basically saying, yes, the voting process and the Dominion software and the signatures and the observing and the witnesses and counting the votes. He's like, all that is very important. He's like, arguably, maybe the most important part of the Mm -hmm. whole process. He says, but there's that's the last thing that happens is the counting and the voting. It's all this other stuff prior where people are being being primed and, you know, stories are getting suppressed. And then there, you got your hoaxes, you got your algorithm, you have all this stuff to where the mainstream media literally bragged how they were able to bury stories. Mm-hmm. I mean, scandals that the vast part of the uh, public has no idea, has no clue that these folks are doing some crooked shit. And uh, listen to this quote. This is a a Scott Adams quote. I I texted it to you. Check it out. He said, Trump got impeached for withholding aid to another country for political reasons, right? Because he wanted wanted some investigative dirt on Biden Mm because they were doing that quid pro quo. Nancy Pelosi withheld aid to Americans for political reasons. She basically killed the whole stimulus thing mm-hmm. for the COVID and then told y'all, like, to your face, bragged. She said, yeah, I, I don't know if you want to pull that clip up with our Wi-Fi, but she pretty much, or y'all could look it up <laughs> before I put Rob on the spot. Basically, she straight up told y'all to y'all's face, to our face, like, yeah, I could have signed a thing and we could have got the uh, the COVID relief stimulus thing going, but... You know, I, I did it to help Biden and hurt Trump. Okay. Uh, damn, that's pretty evil. She did. She basically did say that. That's pretty evil. You know, everybody's mad at Trump that he was trying to do some shit, you know, for re-election purposes. Maybe he's doing all these peace treaties and shit with Morocco and everybody. Maybe he just wants to get re-elected. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's just doing it for selfish purposes. Like, I just want a strong economy so I can get the credit. And then I can get reelected. Yeah. I want Americans to be happy and safe and prosperous just so I could get reelected and look good. Yeah. That's, That's pretty not dark. a bad reason to, to, you know, I mean, shit, we were winning. We were benefiting. We had the strong economy, all the job. 
all the jobs and shit. But Nancy Pelosi straight up to your face admitted, I withheld the COVID stimulus aid relief, whatever, the money <laughs> that people need for political reasons. Oh, but we, the, but we the sellouts. It's Who, gonna- Man, who'd y'all sell out to? It's gonna be a, it's, it's gonna be a dark, and I hate to use the phrase or the what was it, what was Biden's phrase? Dark, dark winter. Dark winter. It's gonna right? be a dark winter. Hunt first hundred days. Everybody wear a mask. It's gonna be a dark winter because the uh, the CARES Act, if I'm not mistaken, expires on the 26th. So it's the day after Christmas. So the CARES Act is is basically what what's funding um what's funding basically everything that's gone out uh, unemployment wise. Uh, I think also the uh, mortgage forbearance and all the stuff with your rent and mortgage is also in the CARES Act. That shit expires. People are not going to be able to pay their mortgage. They're not going to be able to pay their rent. They're not going to get employment anymore. You're talking about all the gig workers are still out of work as well. And nothing's been signed into law. And every and step, everything's still closed. And everything's still closed. Restaurants, Every step clubs. of the way, she has had the opportunity to sign a bigger and bigger bill that Trump was like, yeah, 1.8, 2.1, 2.2, whatever, billion. A trillion and nothing right and here we are what's going to happen in this lame duck season when there's nobody that's you know going to probably pass anything before the new president's inaugurated and all the while all these politicians are getting paid they're collecting a check and they're all about to go on vacation yeah they, they passed something a couple days ago to make sure that the government didn't shut down which they're printing more money and they're making sure that they're getting their their racks hyperinflation yeah um they need to shut down them washington dc airports and they need to surround them fucking buildings and be like hey motherfucker get to work <laughs> the people need the goddamn money get to work sign some shit do some shit and stop playing these little fucking games meanwhile we're all defi- divided mm-hmm. we're all in the dark and we're at each other's throats you know what i'm saying yeah and we're over here trying to red pill people and we're we're telling y'all what the fuck is going on we warning y'all what the fuck's going on and you know the kid. You know the the people like the the cholos with keyboards. You know that sit at the kids' table with their arguments. You know their version of keeping it real is: if you're brown, you need to vote Democrat. Biden is good. Trump is bad. And if not, we are gonna bully you, call you a sellout, cancel you, boycott you. Yada 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 yada. Ain't that the new Megan Thee Stallion song? Yada yada yada. Dude, I can't stand that song. <sighs> Hey, Sorry. Queen, of, Queen of Crunk was up there twerking, dude. Yeah? She she uh, she killed it uh, as a host at my event. She had people up there twerking. She had a dude up. She brought a dude up from the audience. He was twerking, and uh, she was insane. So, real quick, mm-hmm. um, let's mention, I wanted to mention the red pill, blue pill thing, or the red pill tamales. Like the, a lot of people have this misconception that it strictly deals with politics, and mm-hmm. it's not that it's Jingo, and I'm, let me speak for you real quick, is all about Republicans and the right and, the, you know, hyper-conservative people, though you might be. The kind of concept comes from the, the Matrix, right? So if a lot of people that never watched it or don't know what the fuck it is, because I know a lot of my friends never saw the Matrix. Uh, I know, right? So if you don't know the terms, real quick, just to break it down, red pill, blue pill. When uh, Morpheus gives Neo the option to take the red or the blue, the red pill refers to the choice between revealing the unpleasant truth uh, represented by the red pill and then remaining in peace peace in blissful peaceful ignorance would be taking the blue pill and mm-hmm. that's kind of what this whole show has been about mm-hmm. not that just because the republicans happen to be red and the democrats are blue that's all like 100 percent what it is it's let's not be blissfully ignorant and let's try to have some of the unpleasant truths you know told to you and that mm-hmm. way you kind of fucking figure and, shit out and even speaking of like the right and Republican and conservative, all these terms, and you got progressive, liberal, uh, far left, whatever, whatever. I'd argue that, you know, I'm still navigating all of this, but I'd argue that Trump basically shook the box, Mm -hmm. stirred up the pot, and he probably put a lot of Republicans on their toes. Oh, for sure. And he basically knew how to play the media. He knew how to expose the media, um, call motherfuckers out, Like, firing people. You could look at it like, he's just a mean guy, and he has a big ego, and he's narcissistic, and he just wants to fire people. It's like, he's firing motherfuckers that deserve to be fired. And he he pinpoints inefficiencies and bad deals and ineffective people. Like that one dude, was it uh, Kerry? Was it John Kerry that was like, there'll never be be Middle East peace. Never, never going to happen. Forget about it. Not going to happen. 
fuck your peace. There's no peace. And then he came and bam, signed forward and bitches. Didn't win a Nobel Peace Prize, but he was the peace president. Yeah, signed um, another one over the weekend in between all this. Like between, it wasn't like it wasn't shit. Yeah, he, Israel, he go. Israel and uh, Morocco. And then all these fools on my Twitter comments and shit, which I said I wasn't going to read no more. <laughs> They're just like, ah, really, Chingo? Really? Do you know what that really means? It's like, what, motherfucker? It's a peace treaty. You know what I mean? Like, they said it couldn't happen. But this fool came in, said, the news is fake. These motherfuckers got too much power. We getting fucked by this country. We need to bring these jobs back. We need to make America first. And calling out the bullshit and firing people and saying... The border's too loose and too weak. We don't know who's coming through. And a lot of these Border Patrol people, they'll tell you, when they when they catch people, a lot of time it is Afghanis, Chinese. It's all kind of countries. It's not just Central American and Mexican. That kind of brings me to, how much time do you have today? Uh, We're at an hour right now. Yeah, we, we keep going a little bit. Okay, so that kind of brings me to, today is Electoral College Day. We said it at the beginning of the podcast and we're mm-hmm. just kind of getting to it. Because there's a lot of stuff that's transpired mm-hmm. over the weekend. But The China leak, can't the, wait to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, the China leak, um, our leak here in the U.S. Uh, I just wanted to bring this up real quick. Quick timeline, if you haven't kept up with what's going to happen or what could happen. And I told Chingo before we started recording, you got the media that calls the election for Biden, right? 11-7. The left goes wild, takes, you know, take your L, uh, Trump, and then safe harbor de- deadline, YouTube starts cracking down and says, no more talk about fraudulent elections. It's not, it didn't happen. And then today you have the Electoral College, and on the 6th, the Electoral, the electoral College uh, votes are counted. So it, it was a long article by the New York Times, of all people, who actually wrote on this, but of course trying to squeeze the last dime out of uh, the Trump content, right? <laughs> the, the best way to describe it is there are ways that he could win where... Uh, you know, states send dueling electors and then kind of void count, uh, void votes, electoral votes, and nobody gets it. And then you get a contingent election, which means that each state gets a vote and there's more Republican states and Democrats. So Trump would win. Right. There's another theory that Pence could not. He's the one that counts the electoral votes. So on the sixth, Mike Pence goes up there and says, you know what? I'm not counting this shit. Trump won. I won. Let's take this shit to the Supreme Court. And then it goes. You take the shit to trial. Yeah. And then goes to, you know, lawsuits ensue. And, and then again, contingent election. So a lot of people don't think Pence will do that, but then you have dot hards that'll say, no, I think he's going to side with his, him and Trump and try to fucking win this, you know, contested election. So I wonder what the simulation wants. That's a great question, Chingo. Let's talk about it. What, is, <laughs> <laughs> what does the simulation want? Because if you think about it, let me put this to you and then tell me what you think the simulation wants. Right now, I'm only 31. Mm-hmm. I've never seen the world more divided than, than right now. And this is even like kind of experiencing 9-11. I was kind of like 12, 13, I think around the time, 14 maybe. Uh, and some other crazy things that happened under Obama. But right now it's like you have two countries within a country. And I think it was it was either Tim Pool or uh, Ben Shapiro that, that phrased it this way. But it does seem like that, right? Mm-hmm. You have the side that you can, you know, uh, responsibility on yourself. You worry about you. You have your ar- bare arms. Uh, and then the other side is... You can't have your your fucking uh, guns. You it's socialized fucking uh, economy versus free market. It's really let that the, divided. Let the government dictate everything and yeah. mandate everything and fix everything and and just inflate and swamp and just yeah make what is it bigger government. Mm-hmm. And it feels like this uh, election that we're in right now is like the cracks of the foundation. I'd argue that there's a big chunk of the population that doesn't even. Think like, oh, I'll put it to you like this. All the cholos that are pro-Biden. You think everything you just named about what the left is supposedly for, they don't even think, I don't even think none of them even think about that shit. Like, less guns, more government. I don't even, they just think, nah, Biden's good, fool. Because the news told me, doc, you know what I mean? And Trump's bad, hey, he's fucking racist, fool. How the fuck, you know, turn your back on your raza. They don't even know what side, they don't even know what that side all represents. Just like I didn't know. I'm a lifelong Democrat. You know, I was I, I was like, well, maybe assault rifles are, but I don't know. You know, it's like, I mean, there's a lot of mass shootings, right? And it's, right, the news. But then, but then you start to stumble across the other side of the argument, which is, okay, what percentage of that shit, you know, like just the gun debate. The gun debate alone is very, uh, what's the word, a robust discussion. 
you know, we can easily do a gazillion episodes just about all this stuff, but we'll stay on, uh, let's stay on that. Well, I hope we can get, uh, what's, uh, Noir on the podcast to talk about the second amendment. That'd be a cool one. I like how you were tagging him, like follow, mm-hmm. call him Noir. Yeah. Cause I liked, I liked what he put together and, and the case he made and he's black. Yeah. And the reason I feel that that, that can open a lot of people's eyes is because people tend to see things through the filter of skin color. So if it, if he was a white boy saying, hey, guys, in Georgia, we can't let them steal our rights to have guns. People going to be like, racist, right? Yeah. They're just like, oh, fucking gringo, fucking racist, ignore because he's white. But then you see a black dude saying, hey, guys, if, you know, this is at stake. This is what we're up against. If you're in Georgia, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I think people tend to... Uh, listen or keep an open mind just i don't know i wonder how many people um like what's the guy latino conservative that reposted me oh yeah i don't know who this dude is but apparently he's red pilling folks yeah i mean i'm sure it might come across different because the messenger is different it's like okay why is this mexican-american dude from texas telling people hey don't believe everything that's on the news and 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 all the shit that we're trying to red pill people (laughs) about I wonder how many people are, have a, a more of an open mind because I'm not sitting here wearing a red hat. You know what I'm saying? I'm not being a cheerleader and shit for a, for a, a, a political party. Yeah. I'm just trying to school motherfuckers. I'm just trying to be Morpheus. Yeah. And I stuck my neck out by saying, uh, in good conscience, based on what I've seen, I'm not going to sit up here and be like, yeah, yeah, go along with it and stay quiet. Like, oh, yeah, no, Trump's bad, right, fool? Yeah, Trump's bad, yeah, no. Biden, yeah, who'd you vote for? Biden, of course, dog. You're supposed to. You're supposed to, fool. Like, nah, I'm going to raise my hand and be like, hey, guys, um, Biden's full of shit. <laughs> There's this TikTok of this black dude that's uh, going on. It's some web, some service where you just randomly video chat people, right? Mm-hmm, and he's just mm-hmm. asking, he's like, hey, I'm doing a TikTok. Is that cool with you? And they're like, yeah. Who'd you vote for in the 2020 election? And they're like, uh biden you know and of he, course yeah and he does this like four times like uh, biden and then the fifth one he because then he goes oh i voted for trump and he puts the hat on you know the make america great yeah. he does it for all of them and the last one the girl was like just kidding trump puts her hat on he's like hey she was like the only one that was like ah i'm fucking with you but meanwhile you know a lot of the other ones also probably like uh didn't want to say who they actually voted for mm-hmm. unless they really it, unless they really did yeah but they were talking to a black dude that you know yeah yeah, yeah. they just assume yeah can't assume yeah, I feel like I, I like to let it be known too. Like we're like say we're at a Bucky's, and if I see like a a, a white man with his Trump twenty twenty <laughs> face mask, yeah, I'll find a way to be like, "Hey, brother, nice mask." <laughs> Just so, you know what I mean to throw him off too. It because is, it is funny and, the looks you'll get. Well, in other words, it's like you'd be surprised, sir. Don't just because you see a, a couple little brownies walking up in here. Don't yeah. be thinking like, goddamn liberal progressive brownies in here with their fucking latino lives matter you know probably hating on my mask it's like no bro i fucking love the mask where can i get one inside bucky's actually yeah just just to show them like hey bro all this race color shit is an illusion you could find stuff that um like you might become fishing buddies with somebody that's not from your barrio, not of the same color. You might hang out with some buddies and drink ranch waters with some people that's not of your same oh, yeah. heritage or whatever. You, you know what I mean? You could, and I, I would argue that it's good strategy to have a diverse range of friends. If all your friends are rappers and DJs, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, you're going to miss out on comedy conversations if you ain't got no comedian friends or actor friends or Republican friends or people that are into sports or just uh, uh, family life, you know, just regular couples with kids and they like to go hang out at the park. Like, have all kinds of friends. Don't just don't just be closed minded. Be like, I only hang with biting people because, um, you know, conservatives are closed minded. And I felt Marisol and I, we don't want to assume because we're not mind readers, but we feel that some of our friends are kind of giving us the cold shoulder. A little bit. And we don't want to assume because it's kind of like, oh, have you heard from? No, not really. Hmm, but that's odd. Well, usually it's kind of like, well, we're not mind readers. Give people the benefit of the doubt. But how unfortunate would it be that, 
I mean, shit, there's some people in my family. Yeah. Probably look at me sideways. That's unfortunate. It is. very unfortunate because, in my opinion, nothing we've really said on here was, quote unquote, baseless. Right. We're not on here. If I was a sellout, then I'd be getting paid to lie in public. Sure. First of all, who's going to pay me to lie in public? How much do you have to pay me to lie in public? You know what I'm saying? Like, if if it's gonna cost five hundred thousand dollars, or let's just say it's ten thousand per lie, <laughs> who's gonna who's gonna pay me that? Number two, you probably want to give it to someone else. Give it to somebody. See if my chat there is somebody. I don't know. I know he stays out of it, but like comedians. I mean, maybe Fluffy. How much? Fluffy's already rich. How much are you gonna give him to lie in public? Yeah. So I'm not a sellout. Ain't nobody paying me to lie to y'all in public. Yeah. No one so, pays you to take the arrows. So be exactly. Be more creative with your insults. Don't call me a sellout. Um, there's another one. You want to be white. Okay, what part? What's white? What's white? What's considered white? Speaking English? What? What is it? Uh, going to bed early? What? What's white? Taking my vitamins? Tell me what white behavior is, and why the fuck I'm trying to be white. Yeah. That's a that's a low IQ response, in my opinion. Man, you. Man, these people are dumb as fuck. Uh, I yeah, I agree because you know all my friends know how I stand on things. I'm very, I like talking, like I like having conversations about this kind of stuff. I don't care how you vote or whatever. And I remember a couple years ago when Beto uh, was going against Ted Cruz, man, and I, the way I was kind of dropping stuff here on the on the What Did You Said podcast over a year ago, a year and a half ago. They, they didn't get it. I mean, and this particular couple, it, they're younger. They just bought a house in older Sugar Land where it's all white people and it's all older Sugar Land money. And every sign on every lawn was Ted Cruz, you know, and America flags and motherfuckers had their Beto O'Rourke shit, you know. And I was like, okay. The white liberals. Yeah, like yeah, the white liberals. And they're Middle Eastern. Mm. Not even white. And I was like, okay, guys. That's cool. I mean, obviously, are they are they very Americanized Middle Eastern? Um, yeah, yeah. I would say they are. What what attracted them to Bethel versus Cruz? They, that's the thing. I never really got a response. It was just like Cruz is he needs to be out. The incumbent's he's, no good. He's mean. Yeah, like well, I, I don't know why. And one of them works in fucking oil and gas, and the other one works for a big corporation. So I don't get it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Or well, when you meet like veterans, like ex military people that are like. We need to keep it blue and chingo, you're wrong and you know, blue pill like a motherfucker. And it's like, how are you ex military? Yeah, I, I actually, uh, that's one thing I also want to know is how I can hear Tim Kennedy say why so many veterans and active military are for Trump and then see these pockets of people like Georgia, for instance, where you have a lot of mil- ex military, a lot of veterans that say that Trump's bad. Like, wow, why is that? I wonder what it was. Some fake I would news. love to hear it. I would love to hear it. What the reasoning is. And as a matter of fact, that same a couple, uh, anyway, another old friend sends me, like I told you, sends me some stuff. And this is, I'd love to hear your perspective on this. Um, sends me a quote from, remember the 19, I want to do more research on the 1918 flu, on the Spanish flu. And, uh, and see, you know, what's the differences. Because they didn't shut shit down back then. Like, mm. the, the fucking train kept rolling, right? You wore a mask and whatever, but they didn't shut the world down. Mm. So some Twitter fucking journalist or whatever who... Uh, tweeted the Indianapolis Star from November 22nd, 1918, a quote from it. The man who is unwilling to wear a mask, a flu mask usually is the kind who expects everybody to listen to him when he speaks. I was like, okay, so I went to her, to the chick's Twitter that she sent me and it's like, uh, guac is extra, but so am I, is her fucking Twitter bio. And I was like, okay, that's a great reputable source, right, to, to listen to her. So all I sent back was, I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. Thomas mm. Jefferson. Come on. <laughs> she hadn't said anything back yet. I was like, yeah. Oh, wow. Fuck your noise, man. Like, I, I'm, I'd rather take dangerous freedom than peaceful slavery. Wonderful words from a founding father, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think that's what Black Rifle's doing versus Starbucks. They're like, no, I'll take my dangerous freedom. Yeah, because people, I think they feel that it's the government's job to tell everybody how much risk and how much, like, life and living and you know what I'm saying? They're supposed to take. And we somehow feel that that's the government's role. But it's just so arbitrary, man. Like, uh, everybody follow Chef Gruel on Twitter or wherever you can find him. G-R-U-E-L. He's, um, he owns a Slapfish restaurant chain in California. Oh, I just started following him. They're going to bring some to Texas. Uh, Mac Hike from Mac Hike Chevrolet. Chevrolet. Uh, he's an ex-athlete. He's like partnered in one of the investors and stuff. And he's been very vocal. He's been on a lot of just doing the media tour Mm -hmm. um, because he's calling out these bullshit politicians. 
where he's saying, look, y'all are decimating an entire industry. Like, y'all not taking into consideration all these jobs and the importance of people being able to, like, if you're young, you know, you have no other health issues and you want to go out and have, take your family out for an hour and have some wine and hang out and be around people, listen, you know, you know what I mean? Like, support a local business. They're not allowing that. Yet, Gavin Newsom ain't shutting down his wineries and vineyards and he's going out eating at that place, Fresh uh, French Laundry in Napa Valley with all these people in the room and shit, no mask, no social distancing. You know, obviously that's hypocritical. But uh, anyway, Chef Gruel, not only does he, he shows like really cool pictures of food and um, he, he was on Michael Berry's podcast as well. Nice. We should try to get him on the show, maybe season two. Listener funded. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Sounds. Uh, so that kind of summed up, you know, we have Electoral College Day. We have some couple scenarios where Trump could still win. Shit ain't over, but it's, it is very unlikely this happens. But this would be like monumental history kind of shit if he overturns what's happening so far. But it ain't over. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, you then, uh, do, I was gonna say you want to put a pin in it today. Yeah, yeah, okay. we can put it. Only guy got to take a leak. Yeah, we got a lot of got a news still to break from the weekend that we'll cover on tomorrow's episode because Chingo is going out of town, so we're gonna be doing back to back days, and these stories are still gonna be fresh, fresh, fresh anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for accepting the red pill, keeping the open mind. You know, watch out for the okie doke. There's more than meets the eye, and uh, and we will check you later. Versace Mariachi, go stream it. Let me know what song you like. Uh, the merch is still up before I shut it down because I want to just do merch drops. I don't want to just have merch all the time. But hit up my website, chingobling.com. And again, thanks to all the patrons. This show is listener funded. That's how we still have some freedom of speech. Just go to patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales and you will get the bonus feed. You get bonus episodes. Sas. Hasta la otra. Se la lavan y se toman el agua. Peace.